Now, another pre-writing technique that you can use um, is journal writing. And this can take a lot of different forms. Uh, for example, a lot of times in your classes, you may be assigned to write in a journal. I know a lot of the reading classes and writing classes um, will have some sort of an assignment where you will write something in a journal on a particular topic, uh, often before you then do a related reading activity, uh, something like that. Uh, another form of journal writing would be a diary, where at the end of the day, you sit down and write about what you did and what you thought and how you're feeling and all of that stuff. And that may be another source for things you want to write about. Um, another form of journal writing that you might have uh, is something called an academic log. And this is something that may be helpful for you uh, in any class that you're taking, especially one where you have exams you have to study for. Because what an academic log is, at the end of class, um, when uh, the class is over, instead of grabbing all your books and dashing out there as fast as you can, sit down for a couple of minutes and write down the most important ideas that were discussed in class that day. And what happens then is uh, a couple of things. One is the actual physical act of writing helps things to stick in your mind. The other useful thing that happens when you do that um, is when it comes time to study for an exam. I know some instructors give really good detailed study guides. Uh, some instructors may give really sketchy st study guides or maybe not even a study guide at all. But if you have those ideas you wrote down at the end of each class, you have a study guide. You've created your own study guide. And so you can use those ideas, that list of ideas, um, when you're studying for the exam. Because that will help you make sure you are looking at the important ideas you're going to need to know on the exam. So this is a technique good not just for pre-writing, uh, but for just general academic success, that this may be something that's good for you. Another sort of related uh, way of pre-writing is responding to reading. And this could be something you've been assigned to read in class, something you read on the internet, in the newspaper, but by responding to the reading, uh, that means you don't just simply read it and say, oh, that's nice, but rather you try to interact with whatever it is that you've read. Uh, so you may be saying, for example, I don't agree with this at all. It's utter hogwash, and this is why. Or, I like what this writer is saying, but he's not going far, far enough. Uh, he needs to think about this, this, and this. And so responding to the reading, as I said, it's not just taking the reading in passively, uh, but uh, using your own reflections on it. Um, and that is a way both to understand the reading itself better and also to come up with ideas for writing about, for pre-writing ideas. Another pre-writing technique you can use, and this is one that's really, really good um, if you like to have a formula to follow, and that's the reporter's questions. The reporter's questions, um, which are also known as the five W's and the H, um, are things that if you like to have a formula, it's a way you can be sure that you are covering all of the bases. So the reporter's questions are who, what, when, where, why, and how. And so if you use the reporter's questions, uh, one of the things that happens, as I mentioned, it helps you to cover all the bases. So if you were writing about pickup trucks, uh, you might start by saying who, uh, who drives pickup trucks, who invented the pickup truck, things like that. Um, we have what, which could be as simple as what is a pickup truck, or what does a pickup truck do? When, 
When was the pickup truck invented? Uh, when is an appropriate time to drive a pickup truck? Uh, likewise, where? Where should you drive a pickup truck? Where should you not drive a pickup truck? Uh, for example, my truck is so big, it doesn't fit in the parking spaces in most parking lots, uh, unless I'm at the truck driving school at main campus. So where should you or should you not drive a pickup truck? Why? Why drive a pickup truck? Uh, what are some reasons people might want to drive a pickup truck? And then there's how. How should you drive a pickup truck? Or how do pickup trucks get driven in this town as compared to how pickup trucks should get driven in this town? So you can cover all the reporter's questions. And in fact, this technique is one you might compare or uh, combine with some of these other techniques. For example, you might combine it with free writing where you free write for two minutes about who, and then free write for two minutes about what, and so on and so forth. So you might do that, um, where you combine this with a bunch of other techniques. Now, another pre-writing technique uh, that you might use, and this one does not get as much respect as it should, and that is talking and listening. This one, as I said, doesn't get as much respect as it should. Uh, talking and listening can be a more formal situation, uh, such as a class lecture or class discussion where you're talking with your classmates and instructors. It could be something more casual. It could be just uh, you and your friends uh, sitting around the table in the cafeteria yakking, or your family, if you're lucky enough, where your family can sit down to eat dinner together. Um, this is a really good technique if you're the sort of person who gets energized by responding and interacting with other people. If you like giving your ideas out and hearing their ideas and bouncing ideas off each other, and if you really get energized with, with acting with other people like this, this is probably a really good technique for you. Uh, this is also um, in your past academic life. If you're the person the teacher was always telling to shut up, this is probably your technique. Uh, as I said, this technique does not get as much uh, respect as it should. Um, or if your cell phone, you're always going over your cell phone minutes because you're yakking so much. This could well be a very good pre-writing technique for you. Uh, I would just recommend keep a little notebook on hand. So if while you're yakking with your friends, an idea comes up, you can jot it down before you forget it so that you can then come back and, and write about it more. Uh, another pre-writing resource is the internet. And this one can take a lot of different forms. For example, you may use the internet for readings that you're responding to, so it'd be a response to reading. Um, you may use the internet um, like talking, uh, chat rooms, internet messaging, where you're putting ideas back and forth like talking and listening to people. Um, there are also things on the internet called blogs, which is short for weblogs, which is very much like journal writing. Uh, so you may be, uh, and the advantage of a weblog as compared to an ordinary diary is a lot of times the people will write things and then there will be some response and interaction attached. Another thing the internet can help you with is if you're having trouble narrowing your topic down, go surfing. Uh, go on the internet, look at the topic you're looking at, um, and see if there's some aspect of this topic, some area of that topic that you wish to pursue more fully. So the internet can help you with that sort of thing too, with narrowing things down. Then finally, we have the informal outline. Now, sometime in your past academic history, you may have been taught about a formal outline. That's the thing where you start at the beginning with the big Roman numeral one up at the top, and then A, B, and C, and one, two, three below that, and so forth. Uh, an informal outline doesn't have to be that structured. It may just be a list of the ideas you want to cover in the order you want to cover them. Or you may have a little more structure where you've got big ideas and then little ideas below that, and small details connected to those and things like that. And if you're doing this on a computer, by the way, the computer has a really wonderful tool you can use. 
uh, most word processing programs have an outline function. And so you can put an outline, create an outline with your big ideas and your smaller ideas. And then the cool thing with a computer is you can move them around and shuffle them about and get them into the order you want them in until you've got an order you can make sense. So you can experiment and test things. And so the other cool thing is that most computer outline uh, functions, if you move a big idea, the little ideas that are connected to it will move as well. So uh, the computer is a really useful tool. And the outline, as I mentioned, you can mention, you can combine techniques. You might, for example, start with some brainstorming or some clustering. And then just before you sit down to write, you may take those ideas and put them into an outline. And especially if you use clustering, uh, you can just take the different branches of your clustering and sort them into an outline, into an area that makes sense. And so that can be a very useful thing. Whatever, whatever pre-writing you start with, if you finish with an outline, that can really help you to come up with an organized paper. So as I mentioned earlier, um, these are a bunch of different techniques. Some of them are going to work better than others for different people. So try all of them and find the ones that are going to work for you, the ones that are going to help you get past the writer's block, get the ideas out, get the ideas organized. Um, and once you've found the techniques that work for you, then that's something that you can use whenever you have to do writing, whether it's in school or any other kind of writing you need to do. Um, if you've got some good pre-writing that's working well for you, uh, that's a valuable asset uh, for the rest of your life.